Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the fearful avoidant attachment style individual and how they can show up at a high level in the dating and how that sort of transforms in the honeymoon and goes into the power struggle phase. Now, I want you to know we could talk about each of these phases with all of the rites of passage, the lessons, the core wounds, the potential challenges, the expectations and behaviors, and how different people with different attachment styles behave in those ways. There's so much to say, so keep in mind this is me just kind of scratching the surface. I do have like full long form courses, um, which are like three or four hours, and they're the advanced attachment style courses, which are literally like how your attachment style shows up in each of the six stages of relationships. But I'm going to put some high level content here on YouTube because I just think it's such an important topic for people to know because we can have such different ideas about what dating and relationships and love is all about. And they, it's like, I often use the analogy. It's like trying to play a board game with a different set of rules. Like you're going to have so much unnecessary friction and so many unnecessary challenges. So we're still doing a sale right now to support our community during all of the craziness um, in the world. And um, the coupon code is with you. It's all one word. It's for 25% off of our three month, six month and 12 month membership bundles. It's your all access pass. It gives you access to all 32 plus courses um, inside of the school and like 140 webinars or so. Um, and, and four live webinars a week where I just answer live questions and we talk about bonus content and they're an hour, hour and a half long, sometimes two hours. Um, and so that is all in there um, with the with you coupon code. And I'll put a link in the description box below and on this video. So let's talk about this. Fearful avoidance are like one of the most interesting attachment styles and how they move through the life cycle of relationships. What I often see is number one in the dating phase, they do very well. And the reason for this is that because so much of their pain and distress is based off of the fear of trust being broken, when there isn't a commitment yet, when it's early in the dating phase and we haven't moved into the honeymoon phase, like some kind of commitment to like exclusivity, exclusivity or focus on this relationship, um, then in the dating phase, it's like, there's no expectations. There's no, which doesn't trigger their perfectionism. There's no um, commitment, which doesn't trigger their trust wounds about being betrayed. Um, there is very minimal, um, like, in-depth interaction where there's a lot of having to be seen and heard and vulnerable. And so some of the things that like really act as barriers in the relationship for fearful avoidance aren't usually showing up in the trust stage or in the, <laughs> in the dating stage of a relationship. Um, and so what we'll see is even if there are like emotional charges and triggers, usually they're not strong enough yet for the fearful avoidant to like really react. Like even if the, they do get triggered and things in the dating phase, usually they can still save face. And fearful avoidance usually have had to become pretty adaptable um, because of the things that they've experienced. So usually they're very charming and charismatic and um, you know, know how to navigate human problems because usually they had to adapt to become really good at understanding and recognizing human behavior to feel safe and okay in their environment, period, growing up. So what we often see is they do really well in the dating phase. They feel really good. They show up as the best versions of themselves. And then when things start to become more serious, the moment vulnerability is required, the moment trust is required, or the moment um, it's required to be like seen in your imperfections and flaws, a lot of the core wounds of the fearful avoidant get triggered. A lot of the, I will be betrayed. What if I'm not enough? I'm unworthy. Um, I have to earn my worth. And so I can't show those flaws and imperfections. A lot of not core wounds, but just big belief systems. Um, things like, um, you know, my needs won't be met. Why bother sharing my needs? People don't meet my needs. I only meet the needs of others. Things are going to trigger behavioral patterns because you have those, those belief patterns um, like, like giving and, and not receiving in order to stay safe. Um, things like um, feeling resentful um, as a byproduct of overgiving and under receiving. Like a lot of these patterns are really going to start to take shape the moment we move into the honeymoon phase for the fearful avoidant. And a lot of hypervigilance starts to kick in exactly proportionately to how vulnerable a fearful avoidant feels like they have to be. And so it's a really important thing to recognize. And fearful avoidance as well 
depending on if actually not really depending on if they lean anxious or dismissive one affects a little bit more than the other but i'll tell you both um if you're full of wind to lean anxious they definitely feel like they have to earn their partner's worth more um or so like earn their worth from their partner more i mean and like have to be on their best behavior and show up and you know be everything that they can be in all areas of life um and a lot of fearful avoidance won't even allow themselves to enter into the dating phase because they'll play this game with themselves which selves which is like i will only date when you know when i've done this and that and when i have this thing and that thing and and they can really sort of pull themselves back because they feel like they're not worthy enough as they are um a lot of fearful avoidance will have the core wounds come up when this pattern comes up in the in the honeymoon phase of they start to really give a lot of love and and um desire closeness and then because they aren't communicating their needs often their needs will go unmet and then they'll make that mean things like i'm unimportant i don't matter um i'm not seen um i'm unloved and this can be really difficult and so what's interesting about the fearful avoidant is that the moment they get into the honeymoon phase they also start entering into the power struggle phase of a relationship it's like one foot's on the boat one foot's in the dock in the boat on the dock <laughs> and so we'll often see that dynamic take place and so it's extremely important to recognize that and even our feel fearful of wanting to like lean a little bit dismissive sometimes um they'll still play that i have to earn my worth game um and they can pull themselves back from dating as well but to a little bit of a lesser degree than the fearful avoidance who lean anxious so it's just an important thing to to take note of so fearful avoidance like there's so many important things to do and there's so much more to say about each of these stages but some of the really important things to note are that the number one the more you show up well um in the dating and honeymoon phase the more you're authentic you show yourself you show your imperfections you make peace with vulnerability by practicing it um you set boundaries you express your needs you question your stories about your core wounds the more you do these things well in the first two stages the more you're guaranteeing long-term success because if you struggle with those two things um in if you struggle with that stuff in the first two phases in the dating in the honeymoon phase and the power struggle phase becomes like tumultuous um if we haven't set ourselves up for it effectively so it's really important to do that work as an fa to like rewire um the patterns you bring in and it's also really healing in the relationship to self so it's really important to do that work it helps you navigate the power struggle phase way more effectively and long term you save time because you don't get stuck in the power struggle phase for ages some people can get stuck in the power struggle phase for like 20 years it's wild to see um and it can really be something that we actually move through and navigate within like 3 months um and most people stay there on average for about 2 years but um that varies honestly very dramatically based on the people and their attachment style and the reasons they're together and and all these different things so so that's important to note um but also you know it helps you to get to the bliss phase like that's ultimately where you're trying to go it's like the honeymoon phase combined with all of the vulnerability feeling truly seen heard understood becoming whole having a whole partner um all these different things combined so that's what we're trying to get to and you can set yourself up really well by navigating those first two stages in the best way that you can so i hope that's not too much information in just a single video um but thank you so much for being here thank you for watching please like share and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel and I will see you in the next video